Hey guys, it's Tigon, it's Tilmar again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe to the channel by just clicking on the button below, because that's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue the augmented reality videos. I haven't been able to find a lot of information about ray casting with Air Foundation, so I decided to do basically a video with ray casting where we're gonna be implementing a dragging functionality. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing, which is to start and cloning this scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and clone the plane detection and placement. And this one is gonna be called dragging and dropping. So we're gonna be dragging objects in the scene, which is probably more likely gonna be a sphere. So I'm just gonna double click it to open it up. And then the next thing that I'll do just to get things going so that we can build is I'm gonna add it to the open scene so that we have all of our examples in there. All right, so now that I have that, I'm going to be working on a few components. Let me make sure that I have everything set up. So just like on every scene that I've been doing on augmented reality, we have a directional light, we have an AR session, also an AR session origin, and also our camera. So our camera looks fine. I think we have everything we need there. The AR session origin has a AR session origin, of course, an AR plane manager, and also our AR raycast manager, so we can do a raycast against our plane. So I think all of that should be okay. The, the thing that I'm going to be modifying is the placement controller. So let me go ahead and open that up. And instead of modifying this one, I'm going to, let me pull another one because I have multiple versions based on the, the examples that we did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone the placement with many controller and I'm going to create a new one. So let's see, placement with many controller. So I'm just gonna clone that one and then that one, this one is gonna be, we can just call it placement with dragging and dropping controller. I know that's a long name, but it makes more sense when, if I look at it with, you know, having so many variations. Then once we have that, I'm gonna clone the, I'm gonna clone the name, copy the name. And then let me go here and replace it with the class name. All right, so we should be good there. And then we're just gonna allow, I'm gonna do just one game object right now. So let's just go ahead and rename this. This one is going to be just singular and the welcome panel that's cool we're gonna keep that let's also remove the tvs because it doesn't have anything to do with tvs i don't need to keep track of the instances we don't need a public property for the prefab i also don't need a video clip and then we can keep the raycast manager because we're gonna need that we're gonna need to dismiss event bound to the on click so that we can dismiss the welcome panel so i think all of that looks fine and we don't need to do double touches, at least for now. Okay, so I think everything here looks great. So the what I'm gonna do now is I wanna I wanna control whether we are holding the basically the bound the, the touch screen or we're we're dropping it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new variable here so that I can keep track of whether we are pressing on, on the on the on the screen or not. So this one is gonna be a bull and we can say on touch hole and we can just set it to false initially. Awesome, so I think that it's good. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and just fix this couple of things that we need to do in here so that we can get it ready. We don't need to do anything on the move, but we, we do need to track when we end the touch so that we know that we're not holding. So. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set the holding to false. So this at this point we, we're not holding the the touch. So it's gonna say that this one is false. And then what I'm gonna do is when we begin, that's when I'm gonna say, you know, we are holding the basically the touch screen. So the the other things that I need to change is that I'm not gonna do the ray cast at this point. This is just to determine if we're, if we're selecting an object. The raycast is gonna happen when we start moving the object around. So I'm gonna basically do another raycast where we are doing a raycast against the plane. And that raycast is the one that is gonna determine whether we're moving to a safe area, meaning that we can we have a plane that has been detected. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to it's going to get and remove this code here. All right, and we don't need a hit post either because we're going to do something different here. So what I'm going to do instead of doing what we're doing right now is we are going to track the you know the we begin doing the touch. I also only want to do you know I don't need to count I don't need to do a count greater than zero. We can just do a count equal one because I only want to do it when somebody just presses. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a raise so that we can determine if we are placing, if we're touching an object. So I'm just going to say ray equal create a new variable of type ray. And then we can just say camera main screen point to ray. And then we're going to get the touch position. So we store the touch in a variable. So we can just say touch that position. Awesome. Then I'm going to use a raycast hit to determine if we're hitting one of the objects. So I'm just going to say this one is the hit object. Perfect. And this is going to be just my ray. So the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to use the physics. So I'm just going to say physics and then raycast and then ray. And we're going to output the hit object response or result. And then we can just give it a distance. I think for the distance right now, we can say, let's do something like five, since we're dealing with meters, I think five is fine. Or let's make it bigger, just, just in case. And then we can test it and change that value. I might even convert that value to use a, a serialized field. So in fact, let's do that right now. I'm just gonna say float, and then this is gonna be max distance on ray, on selection. And we can set it, let's set it to 25 by default. So it's gonna say 25 because I know that I'm gonna have to tweak it if it doesn't work really well. And then that way we don't have things that are that are hard coded. Okay, so I think that solves that issue. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I only wanna do a specific transform. So just in case if I have the plane, I'm gonna have different things that are in the scene and I only wanna recast the sphere. So I'm just going to say hit object and then we can just say transform equal equal to let's see let's go, there, let's go ahead and say for now we can just say name and then we can just say place object let's just try that for now and then we can just say contain because I know that it's going to be a clone of that so it's going to say if it contains that name then I'm going to allow I'm going to basically allow the on hold equal true. Okay, so we know at this point that we're holding and we're touching, and the object that we're touching is one of the place objects. Awesome. So then what, what I have right here, we don't need the touch position right now. And then the, the other thing that is going to happen, so we're basically going to go through and say, okay, do we have one touch? We do have one touch. And now thinking about this, let's go ahead and do... Let's go ahead and leave it as we as we had it, which was greater than zero. I think that I think it's safe to do that. And then I'm gonna get a reference to the touch, which is gonna be the first touch, and then I'm gonna check the face. If we are starting to touch a screen, I'm gonna create an instance of array by doing a screen point to ray on the camera, and then I pass in the touch position. Then we create a, an instance of ray cast hit, basically a reference. Then when we go through the physics array cast, we're gonna basically launch a ray. And then if that ray is touching one of the objects that is called place object, then we're gonna set the on touch hole equal true, meaning that we're touching, we're basically touching right now the screen. And then when we finish touching, we lift off our finger, we're going to set the on touch hole equal to false. So I think that should get us going. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, on touch hole. So if we're touching the screen still, then what I'm gonna do is I want to do another ray cast because the, the way that it's gonna work is I'm gonna move my finger and I'm gonna drag it to another area. In that other area, I want to determine if, if the plane is getting detected in augmented reality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my example here and I'm going to borrow some code from myself, which is gonna be basically just that piece of code right here we can go back and then what I'll do is I'll just get so I should have the touch position already which I didn't save it 
but that's okay. We can go ahead and set it here. I'm just gonna say private, and then the touch position, it's gonna be, I believe it's gonna be a vertex two. Let me make sure that that is correct, and that is correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say vector two, and then this is gonna be the touch position. And I, oh, I already have one variable for that, so I don't need to do that, because that's gonna be a store right here. And what I'll do, so so right now, this is basically on the star method, and the the way that I want it to, that I want it to work is, I know that I'm touching, but I also want to track the movement, so I need to do another if statement. So I wanna do if the face equal equal touch, Let's do touch face equal move. At that point, I'm going to say the touch position is going to be the touch that position. Awesome. So at this point, we're gonna get basically, you know, on touch hold if we're touching. And then at this point, we're gonna say, okay, we finished touching, but when we're moving our finger, I wanna make sure that the touch position is changing to the touch position. All right, so I think all of that should be good. Then I don't need to do this here. And I'm going to just, just clean up this code. Everything here looks fine. So we're still gonna do array against or plane. And I do wanna store that in a hit pose. Let's go ahead and use just pose in here. Try not to use vars as much as I can. And so at this point we should be, we should have the new location if, if everything looks fine. So what I'm gonna do is I need to grab the sphere and let me make sure, it looks like I haven't instantiated that sphere just yet. Cause I have, so I have the place prefab, but I didn't create an instance of that. So I'm gonna do that right over here. Let's see, now we wanna do it in here. The reason why we wanna do it in here is because I wanna make sure that we only instantiate this if we are ray casting against the plane. So I'm gonna say instantiate and then I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna instantiate the place object, and then I want to instant, I want to basically get the location of the, the position of the hip pose, and then I also want to get the rotation of the hip pose. Awesome. And then I want to store these, I don't want to be creating multiple of them, so I'm gonna create another variable here, and this one is gonna be game object, and then this one is gonna be the place object, Okay, and this one is not gonna be serializable because this is the one that we're gonna create. And I'm gonna add an instance in here, basically associated with the instance, and I'm gonna say, okay, if place object, object is not null, I'm going to create the instance. Okay, so that looks good. Otherwise, I'm just going to change the location. So I'm gonna say position, transform, the position, equal, hit pose, the position. And then I'm also going to use the rotation. All right, so I think this looks fine. And let me see what this is complaining about and make sure that you select the right property. All right, so let me just kind of walk you through. So we're gonna check to see if we have counts, you know, if we're touching the screen. If we are touching the screen on the touch begin, we're gonna do array against the place object. Then if on touch is equal, at that point on touch is gonna be equal to true because we haven't lift our finger just yet. Then as we're moving our finger around, we're gonna capture the position of the touch. And then as we lift our finger, we're basically gonna say on touch equal to false. However, if I'm touching, that meaning, meaning that I haven't lift my finger, I'm gonna do a ray cast against the touch position, which is going to basically do a ray against the plane that we detected in augmented reality. We're gonna get the hit pose if we have a, basically a ray is that is colliding with the plane. And then if I haven't set the place object instance just yet, meaning that I haven't created an instance of place prefab, then I'm gonna store it in a place object. And I'm also going to change the position and rotation. Then otherwise, if we do have a place object already set, all I'm gonna do is just change the position and the rotation. So the other thing that I'll do, is let me just move this variable up and I'm just gonna do private and then there we go. This one is just to keep track of all the different hits and I think we're good. Let me just clean this up here. We don't need this and we don't need this either. And I think we have everything we need. 
So the only serializable fields are going to be, let me move them so they're all together. And then this one is just going to be a private. We don't expose it. We don't expose this one. We do expose the max distance on selection. And I'm going to go ahead and move this one right here. And I think everything else looks fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Unity. And this is giving us an error, but I think it should clear it up. It's because we we'll rename one of the classes. OK, so we should be OK there. And then the other thing that I need to do is I need to associate the AR session origin with our new script. So it's going to be the placement, dragging and dropping. Then I also need to give it the, the, the object that we're going to be placing, which is going to be the place object. All right, we're also going to need our welcome panel, which we don't have in this scene because this is one of the examples that I created originally. So what I'll do is let's go into hanging TVs and I'll copy the canvas. And we can go into our example here, which is called dragging and dropping. And I'm just going to drop in the canvas there. There we go. And then what I'll do is go back into air session origin and associate the well, not the canvas completely, but the panel. That's going to be the welcome panel. The button is going to be associated with the dismiss button. And let's go ahead and set this to 100, just in case. I think that's way high, but that's fine. We'll change it back if everything works. And OK, so I think that's all we need. And then I'm just going to change some of these comments. And then to drag, we can say to drag and drop an object, follow follow the steps, the, the steps below. I think I'm going to run out of space here, but that's fine. I'll just resize the text. There we go. And then the instructions, we're going to say, move your device around to map the area. That's still true. And then select the sphere, the place object, and to drag, to drag around the area. We can say on select to leave the object at the last position. And just say at the last touch position. And I don't need to do that. OK, so it should be three steps. And I think all of that, let me just resize so we can, yeah, there we go. That's easier to read. So I think everything here looks fine. I think I am happy with the. With the results and let me think about yeah we do want to do horizontal and vertically plane detection so i think that's fine so let's go ahead and build this and see how it looks on my device so i'm going to do ios i think everything else looks fine i'm just going to do a build and then we'll just basically put it in my desktop this one is going to be drag and dropping objects i'll just save it and it's going to take few, basically a few seconds to build, but I'll continue the video as soon as it's finished building. All right, guys, so you were probably expecting a video of the augmented reality scene running in my device. And to be honest, a lot of stuff didn't go well. So that's why I'm recording a new, basically a new addition to this video so that I can show you the changes that I made. So a couple of things that I needed to make sure that I added was the event system. I copied it from another another scene and and that basically wasn't copy with the canvas so the dismiss button wasn't working so make sure that you do that if you're copying and pasting your canvas the other thing that i added was the ar camera i was using the camera that made and because the air session origin has its own camera the camera main wasn't getting set so what i did is i basically pass in the ar camera to the placement with dragging and dropping controller. And then the other thing that I did is, is I added a new place object large. And this version is basically exactly like the place object. It, instead, uh, it's just much bigger. So this one is 0.4 on X, Y, and Z instead of 0.1. I wanted to make it bigger because I wanted to make it clear of what you're selecting and what you're moving around the scene. So the other thing that I did is I'm not using this max distance on selection. It actually caused me problems on the ray cast. So in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna remove it because we don't need it. 
And let me just show you some of the other things that I added. The, the other thing that I added is I wanted to make sure that I wasn't capturing the input from the user if the welcome panel was still active. And that basically allows me to click, you know, touch anywhere around the, around the camera and then it wouldn't affect basically the experience. So I'm only going to allow touches once the player or the user dismisses the welcome panel. So that was one change. The other thing that I'm doing is also in the input that touch count, I am setting the touch position regardless of the state. All I'm saying, okay, if somebody touches the screen, I'm going to record the touch, the touch position. That is helpful because when I'm doing a raycast here through the AR Raycast Manager, I need to keep track of the of basically that position before I can do a raycast. So I want to make sure that as soon as I touch, I get that recorded. So therefore, as soon as you touch, that's where I'm setting that variable. The other things that I'm doing as well is you probably notice that I'm using the AR Raycast Manager. This one is mainly used to determine if you're raycasting against a plane, basically either a vertical plane or a horizontal plane. So I explained that to you in the beginning. So that still applies. I didn't change that. The other thing that I changed is I also had a bug on the play subject and I was, I was basically checking if this was equal to null and I was instantiating, which is incorrect and I didn't see it. I'm checking, now I'm making sure that it is null before I create an instance. So the next time around, I don't create a new one. I basically just update the position of the of the play subject as long as I'm touching the the untouch is being whole. If the untouch is not being whole, I'm basically not going to update this position. So that's basically most of the changes that I had to make. They they don't seem like a lot of changes, but I had I had a lot of issues with the basically with the camera. So just make sure that you're passing the camera in just like I'm doing here. There is an instance of the air camera here is serialized and I'm basically connecting that manually through the inspector. And then I'm using the screen point to ray to capture a ray. And then I have a reference to a raycast hit, which is the output value that gets basically generated after I do a raycast. And then I just check to see if the hit, the hit object is one of the place objects. If it is, then I know that I'm touching that object. So that's basically what I wanted to show you as far as like changes that I made. So what I want to do now is I want to jump in and actually run this on my phone. So I'm just going to hit play. I already built it previously, so it should run pretty quickly now here. So it looks like we already have it running. Let me go ahead and start the screen recording. Looks like it started. Okay, so we're running. So I see the welcome screen. And if you notice, I can't really do if I, I'm pressing around, even though you can't see it, but I'm going to dismiss it. And now I can see the touch position of the sphere. And if I move the sphere around, you can see that I can go up. I cannot go further because it hasn't detected a horizontal plane. But if I keep basically mapping the area, and I'm going to go further away so we can see. So I'm just going to drag it and then move it around. I can go up the wall to the door, which is, which is actually really cool that I can do this. And, and it's really, really smooth. You can see how it's on the wall and then as soon as I hit the bottom, it's basically changing the position to the to the floor, and I can go up and I can go down. So, which is which is actually really really crazy that I can do this, and it's and it's so smooth. So, that's really all I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. They have resources for developers that are starting now or advanced game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.